In 24 hours, Putin and China will change everything. Yes, tomorrow, a BRICS lightning bolt will shock the Western hegemony that's been ruling the world for decades. The Western media is totally ignoring the story, by the way, because they don't want to admit what's about to happen. Goldman Sachs, though, understands it, and they believe that by the year 2050, the BRICS nations will dominate the global economy. So on Tuesday, yes, tomorrow, the BRICS summit officially kicks off in South Africa. This is the first face-to-face -face BRICS summit since the start of COVID, and we are about to witness a rebalancing of the world order. The agenda items at this summit are massive. The currency, yes, a new currency, trade, military cooperation, AI, microchips, oil, all of it, infrastructure, rail line, shipping. This is a big, big deal. And the United States, I guess, didn't get an invitation. The British didn't get an invitation. Germany isn't welcome. Is the game over for the Western hegemony? Well, the writing is on the wall. Now, for those of you that don't know, BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And it started out small over a decade ago, and now it's become the greatest threat to Western power that we've ever seen. And I'm not talking about military power here, which we'll get to in a second. I'm actually talking about economic power, oil power, computer power, trade power, the greatest weapons of all, not those bombs. Now, the top of the agenda is the United States dollar, squarely in the crosshairs. Here's how Foreign Policy magazine headlines this moment. A BRICS currency could shake the dollar's dominance. The de-dollarization moment might finally be here. Really? Is it true? After all, talk of getting rid of the U.S. dollar as a reserve currency goes back to the 1960s. Here's the New York Times. In 1968, talking about France trying to separate itself from the U.S. dollar. Yes, French President Charles de Gaulle versus Lyndon Johnson. That's how old this is. That's how far back this goes. This isn't new at all. But now we are at a tipping point. Brazil's president, Lula da Silva, says that every night he asks himself why all of these countries have to base their trade on the U.S. dollar. Can you imagine every night before going to bed, that's the thought that you have? That way he does. Well, now they don't. A gold-backed currency that stands as the backbone of a new BRICS currency is being rolled out in earnest. Brazil, Russia, China, India, South Africa, trading oil, computer chips, minerals, and settling those transactions in a reserve currency that has nothing to do with the U.S. dollar. All of the previous meetings of these BRICS nations have been leading up to this moment in South Africa. BRICS countries are home to more than 3.2 billion people, around 40% of the global population. None of the bloc's members is in the G7, the group of seven advanced economies. To increase its influence, BRICS is considering bringing new members into the fold. Just look at the trade between the BRICS nations. There's a massive financial surplus. The BRICS nations have a trade surplus. Brazil just hit a record trade surplus. So why would they want to settle these transactions with U.S. dollars? Doesn't make any sense. Meanwhile, Europe's trade deficit has hit a new record, nearly $500 billion trade deficit. Which side would you rather be on? Of course, this isn't happening overnight, and there are big impediments to a BRICS currency. The biggest issue right now is that if Russia wants to import things from other countries that are not named China, they'll likely have to settle it in U.S. dollars if they want to import those items. But what if more countries want to join BRICS and ditch the U.S. dollar. Then there's safety in numbers, and the number of people you're doing imports from are part of your BRICS conglomerate. In fact, other countries are noticing and beginning to join. At this summit, Russia and China are expected to approve the new applications of a bunch of new countries into BRICS. Algeria, Bahrain, Egypt, Iran, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, just to name a few. They've all submitted requests for membership to be a part of BRICS. And the Turkish government has expressed an interest in joining the group. Those are just a few of the names. But wrap your heads around this one. More than 40 other countries are now vying to join BRICS. 40. Samita, what are you hearing about just how much bigger BRICS could get? Well, we've heard from leadership here at the BRICS, uh, this foreign minister's BRICS summit, that at least 19 countries have expressed either formally or informally interest in either joining the BRICS grouping or even uh, having involvement with the BRICS Development Bank, which really is aimed at investing in the global south and developing nations to boost their economies. And, and this is one of the reasons that BRICS has become increasingly attractive to developing nations. Mm. BRICS now accounts 
accounts for 31% of global GDP. And just a few months ago, they overtook the United States and the G7 nations for GDP dominance. Goldman Sachs, once again, won't have to wait until 2050. It's already happening. Beyond a gold-backed currency and moving away from the US dollar, one of the biggest stories of this summit in South Africa is AI, generative AI. It's one of their top agenda items. They're holding many meetings on AI this week in South Africa. BRICS wants to dominate AI. And who do you think will be the leader of the AI revolution? China. China announced that it wants to become the global leader in AI by the year 2030. They made this very public pronouncement. And I don't know if you know anything about China, but they are a communist country. And when a communist country makes a public pledge like this, it's all about prestige. So they must make it happen to save face. Yeah, there's no, ah, we missed our target. They have to make it happen. Surprisingly, this was already well known in Washington, D.C. At the Pentagon, in fact. A major threat to America, China becoming the dominant player in AI. In fact, an Air Force cybersecurity whistleblower warned the Pentagon two years ago, said that we must make AI a priority or China will crush us. Here he is. His name is Nicholas Chalin. He warned everyone. No one listened to him. He saw what was happening and because no one paid attention, he quit in protest. He quit because he thought it was impossible for the United States to compete with China on AI. In this article, he says, quote, We have no competing fighting chance against China in 15 to 20 years. Right now, it's already a done deal. It's already over, in my opinion, he said. Chalin went on to say that the AI capabilities and cyber defenses of some government departments were at the kindergarten level, he said. Kindergarten. He recently said that China has kids as young as seven years old starting on learning AI and machine learning. Seven years old. He says the United States doesn't stand a chance unless it doesn't get its act together. Interesting to see that China is not uh, wasting that kind of time and they're not waiting uh, for us to figure it out and they're taking this very seriously, including uh, having their kids starting at seven years old uh, be trained on, uh, on AI and machine learning. So when you start paying that kind of investment <clears throat> and really the uh, the, the understanding that uh, whichever country is going to be leading AI and ML will be controlling the planet. Let me repeat what he just said. Whoever leads in AI will rule the planet, he said. The BRICS nations, getting rid of the US dollar as a reserve currency, build a new trade and military security and infrastructure alliance, and dominating world's AI. Europe and the United States are shaking in their boots, and they should be. This week in South Africa is going to be a game changer and we'll be watching it very closely here on this show. So that's the news update part of today's video. Now I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, which is tied directly to the race for AI dominance. And that company is called Generative AI Solutions. Here's their ticker on your screen. Pay attention to this, write this down. Here it is, AICOF. Now, if you're an investor, you need to pay attention to what's happening in AI. It's affecting everything from cybersecurity to military to healthcare and everything in between. That's why China and the United States are fighting over Taiwan right now, because it makes those cutting edge chips needed for supercomputing. Think of it this way. It's like back during the gold rush, but the biggest winner was Levi Strauss, which made the supplies for the gold miners. And that's exactly what generative AI does. This company makes the computer power for AI companies to come along and then build on top of it. Here, we built this. We built this amazing platform. Now you come along and use it to build your incredible AI applications on top of it. So here's all the paint, here's all the brushes, here's all the canvases you need. Now you go and build your own app. Don't worry about all of the computing power. We've got you covered. Let me put this another way. Just imagine if you took Amazon Web Services, which is estimated to be a trillion dollar part of Amazon's business, if it was spun off as its own company, it would be a trillion dollar company. That's where generative AI solutions comes in. And this company's out of Canada, not part of BRICS. It's part of a coalition of countries that desperately needs this company to be successful in order to compete with China. Right now, this stock is trading at a huge discount, in my opinion, about 50% off of its recent highs. As of this recording, this stock is up 48% this year, which is huge, but right now, it's down about 50% over the past six months. One of the reasons I'm so bullish on this company is that they've built a proprietary cloud service for AI called MAI Cloud. They've built something astonishing here. It enables companies to not have to build out their own giant server farms to run their AI companies. It's an enormous load off your back. You don't have to deal with all of that. These AI companies can use MAI Cloud instead. Again, just like how so many companies use Amazon Web Service to power their websites. 
Generative AI Solutions now lets companies leverage the cloud to run AI. AI is taking over, guys, from every industry we can think of. Why do you think shares of NVIDIA skyrocketed this year? AI, that's why. And this company I'm telling you about, Generative AI Solutions, uses state-of-the-art NVIDIA H100 graphics processing chips in their cloud processing. This means that companies don't have to shell out huge bucks to build AI applications. So in short, without these types of services, nothing can work. Another reason I'm so bullish on this company is that Generative AI Solutions is like a venture fund for AI solutions, meaning they've been acquiring certain AI companies, gobbling them up. So it's like you're kind of buying shares of an AI fund or an AI ETF, if you will, because you get exposure to several businesses at one time. One of the best acquisitions they made is a company called Remits. Remits is a leading provider of automated revenue recovery services for medical billing. So they're able to identify and submit billing claims that they might have forgotten to collect on. Like, oops, we forgot to invoice that person. So it enables these companies to maximize profits for healthcare professionals nationwide. Yeah, they acquired that company. That's just one example. So guys, this industry is growing exponentially right now. The G7 countries are waking up to the fact that if they want to compete with China, they need to invest billions of dollars right now in AI. And I'm investing a big portion of my portfolio into AI. And this company is at the top of my list. Again, here's their stock ticker on your screen, AICOF. You have to use one of the bigger brokerages to buy this stock like E-Trade or TD Ameritrade. I personally use E-Trade for all of my smaller cap stocks. So guys, go and do your own due diligence on this company. Look at their acquisitions. Look at how the AI market is exploding. I think this company has huge upside potential. Go and study their partnership with NVIDIA and that deal that they just inked. It's a game changer. I'll have links to their website in the description below as well as their stock ticker. And we will see you next time, everyone.